magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Una po, maraming maraming salamat sa pagdalo sa unang creativity workshop para sa overseas Filipino workers. Maraming salamat din kay Teacher Marian uh, Brina na parati ko pong naiistorbo tungkol sa workshop na ito. Ang tema ngayong araw ay painting-painting at ipapaliwanag po ng ating guest artist mamaya kung bakit painting-painting lang at hindi totoong painting. Magsisimula tayo sa kaunting introduction tungkol sa kabuuan ng series. Susundan po ng talk ng ating guest at magkakaroon tayo ng Q&A sa huling bahagi ng workshop. Ito ang una sa apat na workshop na gaganapin hanggang Desyembre. Para sa series na ito, una po nating guest ay si Patrick Cruz na ipapakilala ko maya-maya. Ang ikalawang workshop ay tungkol sa pagsulat ng kwentong bayan o folk tale. Um, ang invited artist for that ay si Christian Sendon Cordero, isang guro, bikula ng manunulat at filmmaker. Bida ng pinakabagong pelikula ni Christian Cordero ang Paborito nating lahat na si Nora Onor. Ang ikatlo ay tungkol sa pagsipat o photography at si Rafi Lerma ang ating speaker. Siya ang isang veteranong photojournalist na nakabase sa Maynila. Ang mga likha niya ay lumabas na sa iba't ibang mga kilalang publikasyon tulad ng New York Times. Ang pinakahuling workshop ay tungkol sa poetry kung saan makakasama naman natin si Carla Lenina Comanda, isang manunula na binigyan ng Jim Wong Chu Emerging Writers Award sa Canada. Siguro po ay kailangan ko rin ipakilala ang sarili ko. Ako po si Dada Dokot, isang guro ng antropolohiya sa Purdue University at isa rin pong OFW. Nakasalukuyang nasa Los Angeles, California. Tumira po ako sa Shanghai ng dalawang taon bilang guro sa New York University, Shanghai. At nung panahon po kong iyon, kasama si Teacher Marian, ay tumulong sa pagtatag ng The Filipino Teachers in China, isang grupo na lalo lamang lumalakas at tumitibay. Noong 2019, sa tulong ng TFT, tayo pa ay gumawa ng maikling research tungkol po sa kalagayan ng mga Pinoy na guro sa China. Ang resulta po ng research na iyon ay dinala at itrinesenta po sa Philippine Consulate um, sa Shanghai. Sa mga ganitong paraan at pakikipag-ugnayan po sa Filipino community sa ibang bansa, sana po ay naipaabot natin sa publiko at sa mga representante ng gobyerno ang sitwasyon nating mga manggagawang Pilipino na nasa ibang bayan. Uh, mamaya po isashare ko po sa chatroom yung link po ng resulta po ng research na ginawa po natin ng last year. Hindi po natin inaasahan ngayong taon na tayo ay maapektuhan ng pandemya dala ng COVID-19. 10% ng populasyon ng Pilipinas ang nagtatrabaho at nanginirahan sa ibang bayan. Mahigit 9%, uh, percent, almost 10% ng GDP ng Pilipinas ay umaasa sa remittance po nating mga OFW. Alam po nating lahat na hindi po madali ang sitwasyon ngayon. Hindi po tayo makauwi. Nag-aalala tayo sa mga kapamilya natin sa Pilipinas. At siguro po ay nag-aalala rin tayo sa seguridad ng ating trabaho. Ang mga umuwi pong OFW ay na-stranded. Ang mga nais umalis para makapagpatuloy ng trabaho ay hindi makabalik. Ang mga OFW na sa barkuman, hospital, factory, classroom ay may kanya-kanyang pinagdadaanan. Sa mga workshop na ito, sana ay makapulot tayo ng bagong kaalaman at bahikayat tayong gamitin ang ating creativity para maipahayag dati ng ating mga karanasan. Ayon po sa ating workshop uh, facilitator ngayon, ngayong araw na si Patrick, um, painting can be used as a tool for healing and resistance. Kung komportable po kayo, Maaari natin pagsamasamahin ang ating mga art, artwork mula sa series at ipublish para sa publiko para maiparating sa mga mambabasa ang ating mga kwento. Para sa mga nangangailangan ng Certificate of Participation sa series, pwede rin po tayong gumawa noon kung makakatulong po iyon sa inyong promotion sa trabaho o kung makakadagdag sa inyong resume. Hindi ko na pa pahahabain pa ang introduction mahaba na masyado. At ipakapakilala ko na po ang ating guest artist na si Patrick Cruz, isang Filipino-Canadian na multimedia artist, ang pinakaunang Pilipino na nanalo sa prestigyosong Royal Bank of Canada Painting Prize Competition noong 2015. Si Patrick ay nag-aral ng painting sa UP Diliman, ng Fine Arts sa Emily Carr University of Art and Design, at Master of Fine Arts sa University of Guelph sa Canada. 
Siya ay nagturo ng painting sa University of Toronto at Emily Carr University. Malayo na rin po ang narating ng mga artwork ni Patrick at naimbitahan na po siya sa maraming art exhibit at artist talk sa Canada, Switzerland, Sweden, Germany, Mexico, US, Japan, at Pilipinas. <laughs> Saan na lang outer space pa. Si Patrick po ay isa sa mga um, pinaka-aabang ng Filipino artist ng ating henerasyon. Kaya ta, super ano tayo, maswerte na pinaunlakan po niya ang ating invitasyon. Ang pinakamasayang part ng profile ni Patrick ay isa rin po siyang certified clown. As in my certificate. <laughs> Sa palagay ko po ay um, lubusan natin siyang makikilala ngayong araw na ito. So ayun, uh, sa iyo na ang floor, Patrick. Thank you, Da, for the nice introduction. Um, totoo po yung sinabi ni Dada na nag-aral po ako sa clown school um, after uh, fine arts. Um, Pag may time po tayo, pwede po natin balikan yung story na yun. Uh, but for now, um, baka pwede tayo mag uh, go around just to introduce ourselves and uh, the reason siguro bakit kayo interesado sa workshop na ito. Maybe we could start with uh, Jehu. Ayan. So, um, ako po si Jehu. Lanyo, isang anthropology student sa UP Diliman at um, ang pinaka-interesting sa akin sa painting ay um, unlike written unlike written works na creative na tulad ng stories ang painting ay mas mas hindi, hindi, mas ano siya mas nagbibigay ng mystifying effect doon sa tao at parang yun yung, yun yung nagtulak sa akin na maging interesado dun sa workshop Yun lang. Cool. Uh, maybe Marian? Well, unang una, um, I love painting. Wala lang talaga akong, <laughs> hindi lang talaga maganda yung kamay ko, pero I, I love painting and I used to go with, to museums with Dada nung nasa Shanghai kami. So, I don't think I'm gonna be a painter after this workshop. Pero at least I can get some ideas to paano ginagawa yung painting mo. And lovely too. It's an honor that I'm here with the rest of everyone with you. Cool. Uh, Nikki? Um, I'm interested with painting kasi ngayon we're doing the iPad so I'm in charge with the art design and media and painting is one of the discipline or is it genre that I'm actually teaching so to learn a bit more would be an additional tool or knowledge that I could be sharing with my students mm -hmm. for sure uh, Nancy uh, hi um I just want to learn something about arts. I'm not an artist, but a fan. <laughs> so it's always good to learn things from different uh, areas. So thank you, Paul. For sure. Uh, Gemma? <clears throat> Hi, good morning. I'm Gemma from Shanghai. Hi. And uh, I'm a teacher here. Uh, it's my honor to join your workshop today because I've heard a lot about uh, the workshop that like this and like that now I know. And as a teacher, I believe my motto in life is like always learning. So I want to learn more about this kind of thing. Maybe it will help me uh, to be a good teacher in other aspects. Thank you. Cool. Um, Carlo? Hi, Patrick. Good morning from the Philippines. Hello. Um, the reason I joined this, I'm actually also a fine arts major, but I, I'm in interior design. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, anytime there's an education about, you know, arts and painting, I always want to learn who the artist is, what, what his, you know, 
vision is and how he does his medium. So that's basically how it is. It's like talking to Van Gogh, you know, like <laughs> basically. So whoever the artist is, I'm always willing to listen because every about my artist is different, bro. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay, I'm excited cool. to hear what you have to say. Thank you, uh, Jocelyn. Hi. Uh, oh. Yep. So, yun, uh, interested uh, ako kasi since I'm a model maker and also doing some kits and modifying some. So, it is related. I hope I can pick up some um, techniques also. For sure. Uh, okay. Cool. Did, is that everyone? Did I miss some, someone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, we're good. Well, thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts. Um, I think as a, as a moderator or as a teacher, I think it's really important to know the intentions of everyone. Kung bakit natin ginagawa yung ginagawa natin. Just so that it's more meaningful for us when we do it, um, and I think for me too, as a teacher, I would know more what I could uh, emphasize better um, to what I could share. Um, so today, um, our goal is uh, we're gonna make abstract paintings um, using digital means. So um, hopefully by the end of this workshop, we're, be, we're gonna be able to make some painting um, or paintings, maybe um, but no pressure with whether you have experience or no experience. Um, what's important is we just have an open, a willingness and openness to experiment and play. Uh, most importantly, because uh, there's really no right or wrong way to paint. Um, so that's that has been my philosophy all throughout my practice. Um, and most likely it's, you know, uh, supposed to be fun. And as, as I said in the, in the workshop description too, I feel that painting has helped me to, to heal and to also reflect on issues that are um, quite personal and quite impactful as an immigrant, uh, as a diasporic artist. So I'm going to try to share uh, my journey through that. And in the end, we're going to try to use uh, one, one technique where we can make something together. So I'm going to share my screen. Show you guys a little bit. Um, can everyone see it? Yeah. Okay, so I guess um, this presentation, um, I, I titled it Where is Home? Because I, I think it's always been a, a question that's always looming. Um, in me and you know every time I go back home to a movie I was Filipinas it's like I feel so home there um, and whenever I'm in Canada I also feel so home so there's this like weird conflict all the time of like where I feel home and you know um, sometimes it it uh, it's important to me and sometimes it isn't and maybe sometimes it's the people that's surrounding me that makes me feel home uh, maybe it's family, maybe, you know, eating Filipino food. Uh, so different, there's different ways, I guess, for me and how I respond to this question. Uh, so obviously, uh, our country, uh, the Philippines, has 
had a very rich history, a very rich colonial history, a very complicated history. Um, so I guess this is like kind of a good collage of looking at the countries that have um, occupied us. Um, and for me, this is a source of inspiration um, to see how our culture as Filipinos have always been, uh, have, have always resisted um, colonizers and how we've always been uh, brave to fight. Uh, continuously, um, and even up till today, right? I feel like it's still an ongoing um, process of decolonization and uh, resistance. Um, so this is a a photo of uh, my studio uh, when I started to make art. Um, in 2004. So, ito po yung first year ko sa UP Diliman. Um, Nag-start akong um, nag-decide nag -decide na gusto kong maging artist. So, yung, yung sala namin sa bahay, ginawa akong studio. And obviously, my family uh, weren't happy because it was so messy. Uh, and I started to make all these um, works um, in the living room um, and it took it took a while for them to actually also realize that it's something that I was serious you know at first they were like the kind of a you know typical Filipino um, kind of assumption that you know being an artist they're gonna like uh, you know you're gonna be broke uh, or walang pera dyan. you know it's this is kind of classic uh, trope um, but obviously I uh, tried to continue and pursue it um, despite the hardship so I like showing this photo of Edsa because I, I you know I grew up uh, in Quezon City so I've always uh, you know kind of experience this type of uh, traffic and density. And for me, uh, really like Manila is like this urban jungle um, that is very uh, busy and very alive. So for me, like coming from, from this place and moving to, to Canada, you know, where there's more trees than cars, talagang uh, nashak uh, I don't know, my soul, my soul got shocked. <laughs> uh, it felt very alienating. Um, and it, I, I really felt different as a person, obviously. Um, and almost like not sure, you know, what was more comfortable, right? Because for me, this was comfortable. Um, talagang kung nakasanayan mo na talagang in, you know in, hindi naman siya nakakailang um, so nang paglipat namin sa, sa suburbs dito sa Suri Suri um, Vancouver uh, it really um, it really shook me and uh, really challenged also the way I kind of perceived the world um, by the way, feel free to uh, jump in um, and intervene. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to throw it at me. Um, so this is one of the first projects um, that I did uh, here in Vancouver. And the title of this project was uh, Don't Bite the Dog That Feeds You. And I guess in the Isip ko yung uh, kind of Filipino sentiment of, of being gratitude, of having gratitude, you know, uh, as an immigrant. Um, and I've always thought of um, this kind of notion of like uh, just being grateful no matter what, you know. Um, and I think a lot of Filipinos share that sentiment of like, yeah, kahit saan kayo lagay, basta, you know, matira matibay or kapit sa patalim, you know, like these 
these ideas of like uh, resilience. Um, so naisip ko tong dog na hanap ko tong dog house uh, sa bahay ng kaibigan ko and I used it as a central motif in this um, artwork. And it was also the first time where I put paintings on the floor. Um, and it's also, it, I also invited people to walk on the paintings. So it's a very kind of a immersive way of experiencing a painting. Um, like, <laughs> uh, it feels really strange, obviously, to uh, step on paintings. Um, but for me, it was, it was also like, uh, it also felt like I was echoing the experience of being a, a new immigrant, of, of uh, experiencing a new environment where you feel uneasy. So yung feeling ng uneasiness parang gusto ko siyang i-mirror dun sa experience na pag pagtapak dun sa mga painting. So this is another project I did here in Vancouver. Actually, uh, Dada was involved in this project uh, where we screened one of one of her films. Uh, this was in uh, Center A in Chinatown in Vancouver. Um, so this is kind of a continuation of that past project where um, I go to a site or a place and I, I cover it with paintings, um, overwhelm the viewer with a kind of sensation of busyness, um, a lot of color, a lot of texture. Um, and in a lot of ways, I think I try to channel um, my hometown. Every time I make these installations, every time I make these environments, um, and most of the time, the process of making them is very intuitive. So, hindi ko talaga normally pinaplano anong ipipinta ko or anong anong images ang lalabas. It's more of just kind of. Uh, it's more of a feeling based, I guess, uh, of uh, navigation. And so in this project, I invited other artists um, um, and other cultural producers to respond to this work. Um, and so some, some of the artists that I invited, um, like Dada brought a, showed a film. Um, I think it was also about OFWs. Or was it, um, I forget now, because it's so long ago. <laughs> And some people made music based on the installation. So it was kind of an open invitation to act activate the work. Um, so sometimes I would switch back and forth from uh, making something that's so colorful. And sometimes it's uh, I would make something that's so stark um, and so dry. And so in this, uh, exhibition specifically, I was interested in numbers and kasi inisip ko parang uh, numbers were such a, such a Western invention of uh, quantifying things. And I thought it was kind of an interesting uh, way to make work with numbers, but with no meaning. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of like, I guess I always think about that too of like, well, you know, being an immigrant, it's always like trying to make sense of conf conflicting things and like uh, contradictory things. So I think a lot of my, the themes that I engage with in my, in my art practice also deals with contradictions. Um, and obviously, you know, painting is also an invention of uh, the Western world. So it's also this kind of weird, weird relationship um, with painting that I have. Uh, this is uh, a thesis project I did in Toronto, uh, which is kind of similar to the first two images that you guys saw. Uh, but with this, I was interested in making this border 
this kind of uh, clear cut line because I've been thinking a lot about borders, um, geographical borders or, um, you know, uh, territories, geographies, landscape. Um, so again, it, it, I, I keep going back to um, this conversation of, of landscape, of land, of uh, identities within space. Um, and I also invited people to walk over. So this is a close up uh, when you enter the space. But okay, din siyang selfie room. <laughs> Yan naman dyan, uh, like, selfie. Um, this is another project I did in uh, Winnipeg um, where I used um, these box product boxes because because like these products are also like they're also like diasporic migrants, you know, because they travel across the globe. Um, so the, these objects also travel and they also have a story to tell um, and they're part of uh, the larger conversation of, of how we are how we are connected. Um, and then the writing on the wall was inspired of um, you know our ancient script by Bayin. Pero hinaluan ko siya ng iba ibang sources. So parang basically parang fictitious language, but inspired of by Bayin. So when I think of painting, hindi ko rin iniisip yung painting just as strictly like something on a on a canvas i also think of you know graffiti or um, printmaking or drawing um, as also forms of painting um, so it's not really i don't really see it strictly as just um, something like on on a wall um, so i also make video work um, for this for this practice, for this work as well. Um, and sometimes I make uh, work that is eligible. Um, so this this work specifically was speaking about the the current gentrification that's happening in Vancouver. Um, where again, it speaks about homes, about uh, about accessibility, um, and about landscape. So these paintings that I put on the floor, para siyang uh, yung pag nasa aeroplano ka, tas nakatingin ka sa baba, tas nakikita niyo yung landscape para mga shapes. So parang dun siya inspired actually. Tapos parang naging mga isla rin yung mga painting. Um, um, Actually, the owner of this gallery is also uh, Filipino, so that was also cool. Because bira bira din maka encounter ng Filipino artists. Maybe also maybe it's a Vancouver thing or a Can Canadian thing. I'm not sure, pero uh, iilan lang ang mga Pilipino na nag na nagko-contribute or nagpa-participate sa art sa sa Canada. So, it's really nice to see when when someone is also part of that dialogue. Um, so, hindi masyado nakakailang. <laughs> um, so, I also tend to recycle. Um, a big part of my my practice is recycling and upcycling. So usually, yung work ko nag-transform into different shapes depending where, kung saan ko siya pinapakita. Um, but it's, uh, so it looks different, but it's actually all the same kind of ingredients. Uh, you know, parang iba-ibang versions ng adobo, di ba? <laughs> uh, so, this was a show I did in, I think, Alberta. Uh, 
So this this configuration, I was also kind of uh, I was also kind of interested how there's like these two two landscapes or two two territories. Uh, so it's almost like it's trying to like combine. Uh, so in, in my practice, I'm always thinking about uh, land and like bodies uh, moving. Uh, and this, uh, this sculpture, so sometimes I also make sculpture, but I think of it also as paintings, but um, maybe paintings that are in object form. So ito mga kuchara tinidor, uh, I was interested in utensils because it's uh, also an introduction by by foreigners, right? Because uh, mga Pilipino naman talaga, kamay-kamay naman talaga tayo, di ba? Yan naman ang talagang native, native utensil natin yung kamay. Eh. So <laughs> parang iniisip ko, mga spoon and fork, parang mga simbolo to ng, ano, eh, uh, ng history natin. Uh, uh, supposedly to make us civilized, right? Um, so, kaya siya nakapatong sa mga paleta. Um, kasi parang, parang collage ng history. Uh, so, so, pamisag magawa rin ako ng show na mukhang uh, sobrang opposite ng, ng colorful um, works na ginagawa ko. Um, so sometimes ganito yung itsura nila, more, more sparse, uh, but still same subject matter. Uh, this is another sculpture that I did. Um, so this work may not look like a painting, pero I, I'm still thinking about painting. Um, so for, the, for this work, uh, I requested the gallery to paint the floor blue. Um, pero yung blue na to specific sa Facebook color blue. Kasi niisip ko yung Facebook uh, is such a, an important um, such an important portal um, for me to connect back home and to, co to communicate with people back home and my friends back home, family. So I was thinking of, of this color blue um specifically about about that website uh facebook um because there was a time i think when and i've been getting a gamut not in friendster or myspace <laughs> um i feel like social media has always been like very important to filipinos you know uh, we like to be connected um so itong historia neto is uh I was inspired of the story of Avatar, uh, which I'm, I'm not sure uh, if everyone has seen the movie, but basically it's a recreation of uh, the Pocahontas movie, right? Where yung mga dayuhan dumating dun sa mga lupa ng katutubo, tapos in-extract yung resources, tapos lumaban yung katutubo, tapos na-inlove uh, na yung isang katutubo sa isang foreigner, you know, kind of a classic narrative. Uh, so anyway, I was interested in that tension um, in that movie, and so I used, uh, you know, some some products from the Philippines, uh, like that V cut chips and magic setup with juxtaposed with like Doritos. Uh, so it's kind of like this chandelier, and it's uh, also spinning. Um, but the, the reason I also use these products is because the Yung Gallery it was situated near Filipino Town here in Vancouver, so it's also still it was also responding to the community um, where the exhibition was being held. Um, so this is also another iteration of a project I did uh, where. You know, and instead of using the boxes, I flattened them as a kind of reference to, you know, how OFWs in Hong Kong also use this um, platform um, to create space, to create privacy, to create a sense of, of comfort, a sense of home, right? Um, okay, so 
we're still good with time. Um, this is uh, the house of my my dad in the Philippines. And um, so another project that I was working on um, that I started is called the Camiastreño. And it's a project that I do every three years. Um, and we do it in this house in Camias Quezon City. Um, I think it's a haunted house actually. Maraming multo sa bahay na to. Maybe good and good, good and bad ghosts. I don't know. Um, but anyway, this house was really important because um, a lot of my formative years was was in this house. Um, but in my in my first visit back home um, as a newly baptized Canadian citizen, um, I felt like I needed to go back to my roots again. Um, in order to really understand where I am. Because I think sometimes when you pagumalis ka sa hometown mo for such a long time, you really you really start to forget who you are. Um, you know, slowly when you stop practicing the language, wala ka na makausap na nagtatagalog, uh, you know, it really changes you. So a one way for me to reconnect was to make a project back home. Uh, to give me a reason to keep going back and, and to also reconnect back to my community. Um, so this project led to renovating the house um, and turning it into a gallery where uh, we started to invite um, artists across the globe uh, from Canada, from US, uh, and also artists from, from the Philippines to have a conversation and share ideas of, uh, you know, different perspectives and different approaches in art making um, and concerns as artists, as cultural producers. So, para siyang naging uh, embassy ng uh, think tank. Uh, and the nice thing is it's inside uh, a house. So, uh, you know, we don't have to deal with a lot of bureaucratic stuff um, other than the barangay, the barangay captain, right? You have to make sure barangay, si kapitan masaya siya, di ba? So yeah, this, this project, uh, I guess it's been running now in its third iteration. Um, and a lot of different versions has happened. And, uh, it's been a really fulfilling um, project, and I'm very happy that uh, and dami kong nadalang mga ibat ibang artists uh, from different places sa Quezon City, you know. Otherwise, that they'd, they'd never go to Quezon City um, for no reason. So it was a good way to bring them there, uh, learn about Filipino culture, and also local artists learning about. Um, the visiting artists. Um, so I think it was a very productive and fruitful exchange. Um, and we also got some funding from Canada, which, which was also nice um, and to give it, give it to the, the artists that were participating. Um, and recently I have also moved away from painting and started uh, cooking. Um, so I do this project where I cook Filipino food and I give it, uh, in exchange, people give me the recipes. Um, so it's a kind of a living cookbook archive that I'm working on right now. Um, that's a uh, adobong night log. Okay, I think I am gonna stop here. Uh, this is the most recent project uh, that I did. Um, so recently I, I showed a video uh, work about Tacloban um, in collaboration with a friend who's, uh, who's Warai. And um, it's about the monument of General Douglas MacArthur. Um, if uh, I haven't really uploaded it online, uh, but uh, when I get a chance, maybe I can also share it to Dada and, and she can like um, spread the link. Nice.
And yeah, I think that's it. Okay, maybe I'll just keep it there. Um, okay, so before we proceed to the workshop, um, does anyone have questions? Yeah, pwede ko magtanong? Yes, please. Okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ako agad rin. Kasi ano, di ba kunyari, um, yung isang tao pagpabasok ng gallery, tapos can you return to that piece about the, the chandelier? Ah, okay, sure. Yeah. So, could you help us understand how, for example, one person who enters a gallery and mm -hmm. sees uh, such installation, how does one... Um, know that such is art? Mm, uh, good question. Um, I think it's, well, first of all, I think, um, I think when, when something starts to look strange, I think you can be skeptical that it is art. <laughs> 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 dito, nor dito normal. Bakit may chichiria at magic sarap na nakabitin dito. Um, so I think that's when I start to think that it's art uh, when something is strange. But um, I guess also because it's inside a gallery uh, that also gives it away. But sometimes it's not in a gallery. So I think that's when it gets really blurry where you know hindi, hindi, hindi tayo sure whether it's art or not and sometimes that's that's what makes it interesting is uh, when we can't we can't decipher anymore what's fact or fiction um, parang, parang in real life diba miraculo <laughs> um, hello hello <laughs> Meron kang tanong, Pia? Yeah, she wants to ask what's that, what's that like what a uh, gray watermelon? Is that like a gray watermelon? Oh, the gray water. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> hindi siya watermelon actually. Ano yan? Um, foot massager. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, na ko yung tinatapak-tapakan. Oh, yeah. 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 You say thank you. And what's what's this? You say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she that? loves she loves art and she loves paint. What's this? <laughs> okay, so meron pa ba tayong tanong? Any kind of question is okay for yeah, Patrick, any, right? Any yeah. question? Yeah. Yeah, we hey, are. Patrick. All... Hi, Carlo here. So I just want to ask you because I saw your installations like the the, the 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 art goes from floor to floor ceiling you know floor to ceiling until you know um from floor the whole floor and then meron kaya tang sa taas lang you mm -hmm. set the rules for consumption because you know as an interior designer I will set the rules you stand here to see this you know the distance from here to here but from your you know abstract work how do you set the rules from cons for consumption Mm. Um, I guess depend this uh depend this a project depend this a sa meaning uh, gusto mong i communicate um so sometimes gusto kong i communicate um feeling of overwhelming uh an overwhelming feeling or sometimes gusto ko nang uh gusto kong ma displace yung viewer so Nag-iisip lang ako, for example, like, uh, I guess, different adjectives of what I want to convey. Um, and usually those those words come from um, my personal stories or the personal narratives that I try to communicate. So I use that as, as a strategy to determine a structure. Uh, but most of the time, I'm really flexible. Like, I... Uh, I also break the rules that I make. So it's kind of a an ongoing process uh, until it feels right. Parang, I guess, parang tinitimpla mo siya, di ba? Um, 
I mean, I'm sure with interior design, it's also the same, right? Like you're also trying to strike a balance or a sense of uh, harmony with elements. But I guess in my work, sometimes chaos, yung kaguluhan ng installation, sometimes that also creates a, ba- a sense of balance. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I completely understand, Patrick. So, like an example, so if I, you, you don't tell them, please stand here to, to see everything, or you, don't, you, you, you tell them, please don't stand there, you will not be able to enjoy it. Walang ganong rules, you don't see it. <laughs> no, right? yeah. Yeah, no, I don't really like to, to tell viewers what to do. Um, I, think, I think I like the, the sense of discovery when, uh, when you come into the work. And because sometimes, too, with art, you never, you're not sure whether you can touch it or not. So when you force the viewer to step on a painting, it really feels weird, <laughs> right? So. Uh, and I'm interested in that interaction, um, an element of surprise. Um, yeah. Meron akong ano, kwento uh, about Patrick nung hindi pa siya sikat. Kasi nung, <laughs> <laughs> nung nasa Vancouver kami, si Patrick, ano to eh. Uh, di ba, Pat, nagkatrabaho ka sa mga fast food chain, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. Tapos, um, ito yung early years ng college student pa yata si Pat nun. Um, tapos pero kami art exhibit na ginawa sa University of British Columbia. Tapos dati parang yung works niya nga nasa sahig lang. Tapos tapos na yung exhibit. Sabi namin, anong gagawin namin sa painting mo? Sabi ni Pat, tapon mo na. <laughs> tapos parang feeling ko kasi parang sisikat to. So tinago ko. <laughs> so, so kaya meron akong original work ni Patrick na mga unang ano pa siya uh, as a student. <laughs> well, sabi nila usually pag uh, pagpatay ka na doon na nagkakaroon ng value. <laughs> so <laughs> Tapos yung ano, yung related sa ano, sa tanong ni Carlo na yun nga yung sa consumption. Mm-hmm. So paano yun na for example, we also have these pieces na parang public facing like the bus project. Can you talk more mm-hmm. about that? Anong, anong background ng boss project? Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Actually, I can pull that slide out maybe. Um, so. Tapos paano yung funding nun? Saan yung income galing kapag ganun yung scale? Um, so, pag, uh, so ito yung project na nire-refer ni Hada. Um, so, ito yung bus na Kinomation Sahin with uh, TransLink, which is like the local bus company here. Um, so this is actually exhibition group exhibition tong nangyare. So yung format ng exhibition invite sila ng artists para i design yung bus. Um, so lima kami, uh, five artists um, nagkumwa ng iba ibang design for the bus. Um, so I guess yung bayad dito was through the gallery, uh, which is like the standard fee for artists uh, dito sa Canada. Um, and then we did a programming inside the bus. So nag pa ako sa loob ng bus, freestyle rap, uh, habang umaandar yung bus. <laughs> Pwedeng patingin ng bus? Oh yeah. Oh, hindi nyo man. Oh shoot, hindi nyo man. Hindi nyo man. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so this is the bus. So similar siya dun sa work na ginagawa ko sa wall. Parang uh, based on the Baybayin script. Um, pero fictitious language. So yung title ng piece na to is uh, Stepmother Tongue. Um, so I was interested in like uh, thinking about language and Paano nagtransform yung language? Paano nawawala yung language? Paano namamatay yung language? Um, and then, you know, uh, the idea that 
you're inside this moving vehicle. So it's also kind of like experiencing language while you're moving in time and space. Tapos gusto ko rin marinig yung sabi ni Manny Marian na a sense of discovery plus ano, sa Montessori philosophy. Ano yun, ano, Manny Marian? Ah, kasi nabanggit kanina ni Patrick nung may tinanong si Carlo, di ba? Na kung kailangan niya bang i-place yung viewer. So sabi ni Patrick, dapat merong sense of discovery. So same thing with sa ginagawa namin sa classroom, in Montessori classroom, hindi namin sinasabihan yung bata kung anong dapat niyang gawin. They have to think on their own. They have to have that freedom para magkaroon sila ng sense of discovery at their own perspective. Kasi minsan kapag nasa right, right side tayo, iba yung magiging perspective natin. And then pag nag-move tayo sa left side, iba din yung magiging perspective. Naalala ko yung tuloy yung picture ni Prince... Prince Charles? Ay, sino nyo kapatid ni Prince Harry? Di ba meron siyang picture? Di ba meron siyang... William, Prince William. Meron siyang picture na parang nagaano ng ng sign nung kamay niya. Pero in, pag, pag tinignan mo sa ibang perspective, madidiscover mo na hindi pala yun yung ginagawa nung kamay niya. So, um, <laughs> kaya ako lang... Kaya ako lang naisip kasi it's very Montessori. I'm a Montessori trainer pala, kaya naiiyan ako siya. Yeah, I can relate definitely. Um, Nag-Montessori din ako nung nakik out ako nung grade 4. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, malikot kasi akong student eh. Pero yeah, I really had a good time sa Montessori. It's... Uh, a lot of playing really um i don't know if i learned a lot but i i played a lot <laughs> <laughs> i'm I had a sure you learned a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, my question ako patrick ah yes um kasi yung sa yo um it comes to you intuitively pero sa aming mga estudyante kasi sometimes it's very difficult for them to draw inspiration so pag mm-hmm. Give na kami ng project. Marami sa mga students namin nag struggle to come up with a project. Mm. So, how do we bring out their, or how do we help them draw their inspiration to come up to a certain project or a painting? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, uh, first of all, I think it's good to establish that there's no right or wrong way of making because um, once that's established then there's no standard to compare to right so that that already feels liberating that okay so kahit pangit tong gagawin ko or kahit mali tong gagawin ko it doesn't matter um, as long as we can create something um, and for me um, with with my students um, I find that doing small exercises Uh, re- really help prepare them to do a bigger project. Um, so for example, we would do an exercise where we paint using our non-dominant hand. Uh, so kung right-handed sila, magpipita sila ng kaliwete. So it, it really forces them to make mistakes um, and it makes them humble uh, <laughs> through the process. So I think trying to break that expectation that it has to be perfect mm-hmm. or has to be like um, great, um, I think really helps uh, make it a comfortable experience. Because I think a lot of the time, maraming, marami ako na encounter na students na umaayaw or nagda drop out kasi natutrauma sila sa process. Uh, feeling nila they're not good or they can't meet the expectation. So what I do is I lower the expectation <laughs> and allow them to to just play. Uh, so yeah, there's there's lots of exercises that I do. Um, sometimes uh, we do blindfold painting where they're blindfolded or we make paintings based on uh, food they bring. Uh, so we do a day where everyone brings a snack and then 
we taste the snack and we try to interpret that into a visual language. Um, so, yeah. But I think also something I learned in clown school was uh, this idea of uh, loosening up uh, or stretching, right? Um, I think it's really important to to loosen up or to stretch and before we do something that's uh, maybe um, different or yeah. might not be comfortable. So, um, you know, you could do that either by watching a video or um, doing a small demo. Uh, yeah, those are my uh, strategies. <laughs> um, question, Patrick, because actually, I was curious about sa clown school na sinasabi ni Dada kanina. And akala ko talaga <laughs> lang siya. So what drove you to get into that? Kasi it, it's actually very fascinating for me. Mm -hmm. And it's the, first, it's the first time that I heard about the clown school then. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, actually, it was... Uh, actually, aksidente siya nung na-discover ko yung clown school. Actually, it was my brother who... Uh, who did it first. And I don't know really how he found the school. Um, and uh, he's like, you know, one day I came home and he's like, Patrick, uh, you gotta try this. You gotta try this workshop. It's, it's changing my life. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, uh, all we do is laugh. We laugh and we play with yoga balls. And I was like, what? And so I, I got really curious, um, and this this is a time where I just finished my my undergrad. So I just graduated out of art art school, and you know I was I was broke and I didn't have any job, and I was like, oh, you know, kind of kind of depressed too because uh, I was like, you know, I spent so much time studying and taking out student loans and now I can't get a job. So I, my remaining money, I spent it on clown school. <laughs> um, but what, what was amazing with this type of clown school uh, was it taught us to work in a different method uh, that's quite opposite from the art school training. Because it's an art school, um, I felt like it, it had a lot to do with thinking, with theory, uh, with a lot of conceptual approaches. Whereas in clown school, it was very physical. Uh, it was very intuitive, it was very playful. Um, and we had a lot of exercises with our emotional body, not just the mental body, but also the emotional body. So it, it was kind of like therapeutic, uh, so para ako nakalaya nung nag-clown school ako parang doon ko na realize na parang oh hindi hindi lang one way para gumawa ng art um, pwede 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 rin akong gumamit ng ibang medium um, para makapagkuha ng art so that's that's what drew me in uh, and uh, up until today i think i still use those ideas um, especially the concept of play. Playing is, um, I think, one of the critical aspects in, in my practice. Because yeah. most of the time, um, pag nagiging trabaho na lang yung work, uh, you know, you stop enjoying it and it's like, oh my God, why am I doing this? <laughs> you know, I think we always reach that uh, stage, right, when, in our practices, whatever we're doing. So, but when we incorporate play um, or humor, um, it tends to become lighter. And then we, and then we find our ways again back to why we're actually doing what we're doing. And it's, it's a kind of a refreshing energy. Thank you, that's actually very interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> I think Carlo would be interested. Right, Carlo? Yeah, maybe uh, 
Maybe that's the workshop I should have pitched in. <laughs> yeah, Cloud School actually is very, very interesting. Um, Patrick, Carlo again. Sorry? This is Carlo again. Um, oh, hi, more question. Sure. What is the end goal? Like, for example, you do an installation for a gallery and then you don't set the rules. So you start here and here. You walk here, you walk there. How will you make sure, how can you be sure that the audience got what they wanted? Or do you put a goal in the beginning, can it come up when you're at the end? Mm. Or in the middle, you put something, you know, how do you make sure that your goal here is what they got? Mm. Um, I think it's actually quite impossible to determine um, ano yung makukuha ng audience because everyone will interpret it so differently. Um, in their own subjective way. So I think what I could do is establish uh, a certain um, parameter only for myself though, uh, as the artist, but in terms of the viewer, they really complete the work. Um, the audience really uh, fulfills that completion. Because um, without the viewer, I don't think the artwork can exist either, right? Um, otherwise it's just a, a piece of thing in a space but um, so I, I don't necessarily try to control that because it's, I think it's uncontrollable but uh, like I mentioned earlier it depends on the project um, sometimes you can force the viewer to to go through something right or to experience something but at the end of the day it's still it's still up to the viewer how how they're gonna read it. And I guess with 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 goals, um, I think with, with art making, it's quite different because um, the goals are quite loose, I think. And it's kind of funny because I feel like in art, it, it really we really thrive on making uh, nuances, or <laughs> you know, like the more vague it is, the more better in some way. Um, but you know, that's just one way of that's just one way of making art. So I I also don't believe that there's one way of making good art or bad art. No, Patrick, don't get me wrong. I, I completely agree. You can do art a million different ways, but it's still, there's always like the end that, you know, no matter it's a, you know, ceiling installation, it's a painting on a border or a wall or a floor, there has to be something at the end that some, that the audience will consume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for so, sure. Easy siya pag, ano eh, easy siya pag painting that, you know, two by three frame, alam mo yung nakakainin niya. Mm -hmm. But if it's a large installation or a sculpture, like Vinyan, like may hear of ano it defined, diba? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that um, that feeling of having a hard time to define things, I, I tried to mirror that with my experience as a as a as a migrant, as as a as a diasporic person, as an OFW, you know, it's it's that feeling of like getting lost and yeah, maybe that's one of the kind of, uh, of feelings that I want to convey to the viewer uh, where it's like, you know, it's hard to decipher anymore what, what things mean, you know, when they see so many things that's like overwhelming them. Um, so I'm, I'm just, uh, I guess in my, in my own practice, I try to mirror that experience and uh, that's one way of conveying that message yeah actually it is really very overwhelming when you showed those photos kanina i was like wow <laughs> I mean, as an artist to artist i would be i would be like wow so that would be you know, a good a good thing for you you know respect to the artist na wow natuwa ako ibato <laughs> If you remember, I don't know, you know Bansky, I'm sure. I love his mm. work. And it's just random graffiti on the wall and people are overwhelmed. They don't even know who he is, right? Mm -hmm. That's it's true. basically the same as yours. Na bahala na, ano man matanggap nila dito. 
Yeah. But I guess for me, my, my real concern is really, uh, you know, sharing stories of, of being an immigrant and uh, sharing the kind of nuances of being a Filipino in a, in a foreign place. Um, so for me, every time I see like, you know, uh, places that sell Filipino food, uh, wherever I am, it, it gives me a sense of joy that I can like connect um, to my home um, wherever I am. Or, you know, when you see a Filipino in a foreign place, right, it's always like, oh, tigasangka, you know, there's always that interaction of like, oh, Filipino, parang, you know, parang andali, andali maging uh, comfortable. So I, I think those stories for me is more, much more important and I find value in sharing those to other people that may not experience it otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, thank you for the questions. Um, I guess Dada left us. I don't know where she went. Um, but uh, maybe we can take a 10 minute break. And then after that, we can begin our painting painting workshop. Uh, is that okay? Okay. Ready na ba kayo mag painting painting? Sige. Yung ba yung painting painting? <laughs> Ito na. Ilalantad ko na ang... <laughs> ang proseso ng pagpipinting-pinting. Okay. Game. Okay, game. So, um, kailangan lang natin ng papel at uh, pangsulat. At uh, ito po ang ating prompt. Nakikita niyo ba yung screen ko? Asan yan? Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Ano yung black ano, part ng screen? Black part? Oh, border lang yan. Okay. Oh, wait. The merong gray. How about this one? Yeah. Okay, kita. Pero meron gano eh, parang gray box. Meron sa iyo ano, Jehu? Yes, meron pong gray box. Yeah, may gray box. Gray box. Oh, baka yung ito. How about this? Yeah, tumaas. Tumaas. Yeah, wala na. Okay. Ayun okay. yung window. Yun. <laughs> window yun ng mga mukha natin. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> ito yung prompt ko for uh, for everyone in this workshop. So, what we're gonna do is uh, maglilista lang tayo ng either tatlong tao or tatlong lugar or tatlong bagay na nakapag-influensya sa buhay natin or impacted your life. So basically, the first three things uh, that are quite um, integral into your life. Uh, so pwede mo siya i-combine, pwedeng tatlong, pwedeng isang tao, isang lugar, isang object, or pwedeng tatlong tao lang. And then, once you've identified um uh, those three items, you describe natin yung bawat bagay na yun uh, with, you know, one to three sentences. So, um, basically just a short description. Okay. Then after that, once we have, okay, so actually, why don't, why don't we do that right now? And then, um, and then we'll, we'll uh, go, go through from there. Uh, ano pa? Merong yeah. bagay sa Bicol, hindi raw makapasok yung si Marian, pero she's trying. 
Okay, sure. Right. Oh my god. Well, a uh, good thing we have this recorded, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Welcome back. Hi. Hi. Okay. Ano yung ano? Merong three people, places. Pat merong box ulit. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, maglista lang kayo ng tatlong tao or tatlong lugar or tatlong bagay na kapag influensya sa inyong buhay. At i-describe natin uh, each item by writing a small sentence kung ano yun, kung ano yung nangyari sa'yo, anong bakit yun ay sobrang influential sa iyong buhay. Tapos pwede, pwede nyo siyang i-mix and match. So, sabihin nyo lang pagka tapos na kayo, then uh, we can proceed to the next step. May box. Oh. <laughs> Okay, meron three people.
Okay. So, pakita ko lang yung example ko dito sa akin. So, um, like I said, walang tama or mali in, in this uh, exercise. Uh, so, for me, these are the first uh, three things that come into mind when I think of places that have impacted me um, as a person and as an artist. So, Quezon City, you know, airport, and uh, winter in Canada. So, uh, from the description that you guys have written down, um, I want you guys to just circle um, some adjectives within those uh, descriptions that you wrote, um, and just like highlight what which one like jumps out. So for me, it was lively, noisy, sterile, cold, freezing, alienating. So. So from there, we're going to make our own visual vocabulary. So actually, parang uh, parang creative writing din tong exercise natin. So, um, but the difference is uh, what we're gonna do is itong visual vocabulary natin. I I interpret natin ito through uh, color or through making lines um, or through shapes. Um, so. Pag iniisip ko, kunwari yung word na lively, um, ano bang itsura ng lively? Maybe maraming spikes or, you know, it, it's really up to your interpretation um, what that may look like. Um, so this is a, a quick example of what I made um, by using uh, the visual vocabulary that I wrote. Um, so ito yung interpretation. Uh, uh, so when I was thinking of sterile and cold, but I imagine ko, there's a window where there's snow coming down um, and then freezing and alienating, um, you know, this kind of like solitary window uh, that looks like a prison cell. <laughs> but you, so th this exercise is really all about um, making meaning, right? And um, it doesn't necessarily, uh, we don't necessarily need that the viewer would understand what we make here, but rather having more meaningful um, interaction from us um, as, the, as the maker of the work. Okay, so once you've built your uh, visual vocabulary, um, I want you guys to go to this website. I can post it also in the chat room. Okay, did everyone uh, see the link in the chat room? Okay, so if we just click on that link, it looks like a, oops, that's that's mine. <laughs> Not that one, <laughs> but second. I think that led to my painting. The second link? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Do you have a, everyone has a blank canvas? Yeah. Okay. So maybe we can uh, start playing and experimenting and using the visual vocabulary we created um, and try to interpret it uh, using the tools we have here. So all of us? Sure. Yeah. Same canvas? Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll all have different, um, oh, okay. 
Yeah, you can. We, we will save it individually. Okay. Yeah. And if you don't want to do it right now, it's also fine. Um, I just wanted to share this website so you can also like do it at your own time and uh, at your own pace. Uh, but um, did you want some examples, Dada, from participants? Uh, if or they just... would like to work, we can try for okay. five minutes. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. maybe let's let's make. Uh... Yeah, let's make something. <laughs> <laughs> And then how do we show you what we produced? Um, so when you click on that website, you can see that there's, it says on the upper left, it says file, and then you can click save as. And so you can save as your painting and it will, it will download immediately to your computer. Okay. So you can save your painting. It also says load from URL. Load from URL. Oh, maybe it doesn't. Okay, I'll just try whatever. And then I will work. So five minutes? Sure, five minutes. Yeah, okay.
Okay. Does anyone want to share um, their work? Who wants to share? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, also, no, I'll... no, pr no pressure if, uh, <laughs> if no one wants to share. Maybe it's too personal. <laughs> but I'm also curious, just like what, what people. Uh... I can go first. Sure. Yeah. Maybe you could <laughs> share. Mine's, your, uh... Share your window. Yeah. So this is really just something. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. I don't know what it is, but. My three things are, the first one is a person. So this is my mother. It's a, can you see this figure? And the descriptors mm -hmm. were strong, small, but also weak. So I guess that's why she's a bit uh, kuba here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the um, P, I don't know. I, I didn't want to think of Purdue, but this one is like P at the <laughs> university. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I and mean, I'm not even there at the moment, but just for some reason, that was the first place that came to my mind. And they wrote vast and flat. I guess geography really affects how we feel, I don't know, mm -hmm. or think. It has a huge impact. And the third one is, I don't know, it's a laptop. Mm. And I used busy and always turned on. <laughs> nice. So I guess I can make some more drawings if I get time. Yeah. No, that's cool. I mean, for such a short amount of time. And I think it's it's also so abstract. Like if if obviously if someone saw this without knowing the workshop, it will be very cryptic um, to understand it, right? Uh, which makes it interesting, right? That we can actually make meaning in such short amount of time. Amazing. Who would like to share theirs? Nikki? Um, I'm struggling with drawing. I just did the visual <laughs> vocabulary and I, I have the thing in my mind, but I haven't drawn it yet. Okay. Could That's you tell okay. us about the three things? Yeah. Well, not really three things. I chose three people. Mm. So I chose my dad and I described him as uh, someone who has an infinite love. <laughs> And then my mom, which is very enduring. Mm -hmm. And then my husband was very resilient. Mm -hmm. And so I put them to all together and I wanted to, to draw a, a rose because I've always believed since I was young that um, rose is love. You know, like in every occasion we give rose to people like mm -hmm. Mother's Day, Christmas Day. And um, also, I know that rose has like thorns. So like I, I would depict it as like, despite the, the struggles and the challenges, my mom would be able to withstand all of this. And um, for my husband being resilient, um, I do know that um, rose is a cut out flower. So even if you cut them and then grew them back, they would still survive. So that's how I put the ideas together. Cool. That, that's all. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Carlo, artist, or somebody else looking? Okay. Oh, there's Carlo. Or yeah, anyone. That's actually, I find that really cool uh, when we find a way to connect these words visually and somehow it makes sense to us, you know, uh, when we think of these images. I think that's also what's beautiful in um, making images. It's the way language becomes so fluid and it becomes um, so slippery um, that the meaning shifts um, when it when it when it becomes art. Okay, um, I think uh, let me share something. Yeah, please. 
Um, how do I do this? Just press um, share content, right? Um, yeah. Um, only the host can share in this oh. meeting. Okay. Oh. Oh yeah. Now you're a co-host. Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, um, I show uh, the, my three things. The moon is one. The, the white here is Shanghai. This is a building, you know, one of the taller buildings there. And the line represents being a minimalist. It's the horizon of the minimalist. You know, this is actually Steve Jobs. You know, sorry for being, <laughs> you know, so idealistic. I just love the guy. I actually cried when he died. And then until now, I'm still following, you know, how he does his, you know, his work. So um, how do I describe this? Well, Shanghai for me, it's very futuristic and geometric. I really love the concept of the city, the urban planning of everything there. It's just... It's just for me. I mean, I, I think I was born, you know, to see things how simple they are, but you know, can still have impact. Mm -hmm. And the light and the, the the circle here is the moon, which can just you know lighten up everything. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, light and dark basically is how I describe the moon because it lights everything dark, and it can be you know your source of. And I just love the shape of the moon, whatever it is, crescent shape, half moon, full moon. And the horizon here is just being a minimalist. That's basically just me. I think Marian actually knows me. I know I'm, I'm a very simple, but you know, but that's how I think I am. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay, mom, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for Thank sharing. Um, thanks for sharing. Yeah, actually, yeah, being a designer and an artist, actually, here is where we draw the line, you know, Patrick, because we mm -hmm. have constraints. Being a designer, I know where the rules are. I cannot make a, you know, I cannot make a design that is as big as you did, because I have mm -hmm. rules to follow. Mm -hmm. But we are both artists, so you know, difference. I think artists, because they're, they're very like whatever. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah, but we don't. We both create only in a different form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a different language, um, but it's yeah, essentially it's essentially communicating the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Next. Thanks, Dada. Hi, Dada. I miss you. Oh, hi. Hi, Carla. See you again soon. Okay. Thanks for joining. Uh, should we get one last volunteer? Sure. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody? Um, Carlo, I think you have to stop sharing your screen. Okay. Oh, there. <laughs> Thank you. Ilang share na last. Share, share. Share, share, wag mahiya. <laughs> or we could just, uh, yeah, send us later kung gusto niyong mag-share. Uh, yeah, I would love to see you. what everyone comes up with uh, later too. Could you give us uh, your email address, Pat? Yeah, I can mm -hmm. type it. I can type it in the chat room. Uh, can I share it now so I don't have to share it later? <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> <Sure>. Okay. <laughs> um, I have to let you know that I'm actually creative unfortunately my imagination works really well but not my hand that's for sure <laughs> I love that's, that. fair. that's fair so anyways i chose three i chose one person and i chose two things so first it's montessori and then the reason why i chose her is because she gave me a sense of direction um, back then, I wanted to become a mass, I wanted to take mass communication, I wanted to become a lawyer, there were too many things in my head. And then when I became a Montessori trained teacher, then I had this sense of direction that I wanted to be a Montessori 
teacher. And then the second one is Philippines. <clears throat> I'm really very passionate of being a Filipino. <laughs> Um, hindi naman ako nagtibaka nung nasa UP pero I am really very <laughs> passionate about our culture no matter how ano yung explanation mo hanina it's so complicated right where Phil- Philippines is very complicated but I still love it so I, I still love my country <laughs> and then the third one is China um, I've been working in China for many years and I'm really very grateful despite of all these disputes about the land <laughs> I am still very thankful because I grew um, as a professional and uh, personally, I also grew in China. So I was thinking of having the flag of China and the Philippines and then like a road going somewhere. Pero hindi ko talaga hindi ko talaga siya mad- na lang. Thank you. Thank oh, you. I could see it. I could imagine it. <laughs> Can you draw that for me, please? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ayun. Okay. So, I guess um, if there are questions for Pat, uh, let's have them. And uh, kung ano man, Patrick uh, gave his email address if you would like to forward your work to him or uh, anything. Yeah. Final words? Well, uh... Oh yeah, sorry. Wala pa yung art ni Marian. Describe lang niya. Uh-huh. <laughs> Visual. You can draw Sorry, that for me, Carlo. <laughs> you can draw that for me, Carlo. <laughs> Actually, parang uh, conceptual painting yun eh. So, describe mo yung painting. So, i-imagine yun na lang namin. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it still works. It's still a painting. Yeah, so I think what we can take away from here is that Anything could be art, right? Mm. Parang ngayon ang mes- mensahe. <laughs> Di ba, Pat? Yeah, anything could be art. And I think the fastest way in making art is something that is based from your experience. I think uh, because hindi mo na kailangan magsinungaling or maghanap ng ibang source. Uh, yung buhay mo is uh, a full-on novel. <laughs> so... <laughs> Your life is a masterpiece, so... Wow. There you go. <laughs> masterpiece? Hindi na bibili? Tingi-tingi. Tingi-tingi lang. No. But no, thank you for uh, taking uh, the chance and participating in this workshop. And thank you, Dada, for putting this together. And uh, I hope I can join your other workshops. Yeah, come. Yeah, the next definitely. one is uh, on, I think, November, mid-November. Okay. And it's with Christian Sindon Cardero, who's a all-around writer, artist, filmmaker, a bookshop, bookstore owner. And as, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, his latest film stars Nora Honor. And mm. it's amazing, right? And he's, I think he's written about 10 books. And he will focus on uh, folk tales, writing Gwentong Bayan folk tales. So, uh, um, is he in Bicol, Dada? Is he in Bicol right now? Yes, he is in Naga City. Oh, maybe I can meet him. Up. <laughs> yeah. I'll go to his bookstore. I heard about it. Yeah, called The Savage Mind. Yes, yes, yes. And I think it is the hottest bookstore in the Philippines right now. Anong, yeah. anong pangalan ng bookstore? Savage Mind. Savage Mind. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you very much for coming. And uh, we'll send um, information on the next one. And this is really just a very light gathering. Walang pressure. Parang mga magkakabarkada lang na nag-usap yeah. ng Zoom. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks everyone for coming. Bye. Okay, ingat. Thanks, Tada. Thanks so much, Patrick. Thanks, everyone. Salamat. Bye. Bye-bye. I have, a, I, have a, I have another meeting. Oh, so bye. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki, Jehu, Carlo, Techi, and Nikki. Bye. Thanks, Pat. Thank you, Dada. Oh, Facebook. Okay. Sarako na, ha? Okay. Bye-bye.